My name is Dallas Poole. I'm with Master Web Design here in Austin. Um, so lately in a couple of projects, we've been working with HTML5 and CSS3 in a lot of the stuff that we've been doing, and I was just really blown away with the power of it, and realized that a lot of people that I talked to about it didn't know anything about it. Uh, their first question is, what's wrong with what we have? Uh, HTML4 is going to be, it's kind of thrust upon us, and so we were left to, in the dark, really to, to bring up the way we want it to work, and that led to a lot of uncertainty, a lot of divitis, ID hell where classes are used and, and IDs are used for everything. Um, and we've had to do a lot of hacking to get things like drag and drop working in uh, the current browsers, IE6 and 7 here. Uh, and you know, despite how bad it is for stylistic design, tables still worked relatively well for us. They were reliable and nothing would wrap down to the bottom of the page. So we found a lot of people sticking with that. Uh, it's gotten a lot better with, with uh, IE7, but it's still not as good as it could be. With CSS, it was very powerful, and it's a great way to style our pages and to switch out the look and feel of our systems, but we were still very limited as to how we could gain access to some of our elements, and that led to the ID hell and the class hell that, that we uh, deal with today. And all of that, that lack of structure generates a lot of messy code. So we end up with you know 4,000 line CSS files that we have to trudge through that we inherit on our, our projects a lot of times. So what's new? Uh, HTML5 gives us a lot of semantic tags. So our section tag here is going to tip, not replace but but enhance your div tag. So instead of a div of you know class container, or as you would write, it would be class main or class m1 or class div1 or whatever, it's section. So you have a section tag wrapping your page. You have a section tag wrapping your main content. It's very semantic and I'll be able to look at somebody else's code, hopefully in the future, and figure out what they're trying to, in, to do, what their meaning is behind their code. Uh, same thing with our other block level elements here, header, nav, article, figure, and footer. Uh, the only thing that might need a little explanation is nav, which is by W3C standards meant to encompass your primary site's navigation. Uh, not necessarily in-page navigation, but that's uh, that's from the menu tag, which might go away. Uh, also, figure meant to be like a an image with a caption, uh, some, something of that nature. The we, we've gotten a lot better with uh, you know cleaned up the 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 intent of HTML5, but we still have a little uh, confusion here, where in the main element there is a side. And in many of the tutorials you'll see online, they use a side as a sidebar in your page when it was really meant and intended by the W3C to uh, incorporate a side content like a pull quote. So even now, we've just been given this brand new thing. We've already said, screw you, we're doing it our way. <laughs> so you know, well, it'd be interesting to see how that matures. So what this gives us is, like I said, instead of divs with arbitrary names for class names and IDs, we end up with very nice, clean uh, markup. And the good news is, is it works everywhere. It works even back all the way to IE6. And all you have to do is this. If you're going for a strict HTML5 doc type, we've got a new doc type, very cleaned up. Um, that's all you gotta do. And your, your browsers will automatically know that all of this new, these new tags mean something. But if you're stuck with the old HTML transitional or, or strict, make them all display blocks. Your browser, uh, for an unknown tag, except in Firefox 2, and I'll get to that at the end if I have time, uh, will display an unknown element as an inline element, so if you force it to display block, it works. So we also get video and audio, so we are seeing a lot of transition out of Flash for control of media into browser support of media. Uh, these come with very robust JavaScript and CSS hooks for scrub, drag, click, play, finish, and end, and we also have uh, subtitle support in HTML5 for, you know, between X and Y coordinates on the timeline, display this text in a little footnote. So that's cool. Uh, the other really cool stuff you get with HTML5 is cross-domain messages, which, uh, so your Flash application can talk to your open browser in another window, which can talk to your desktop application all without, uh, without interference from security notices. You can only pass strings, but you know JSON is a string, and that can always be evaluated, so that gives you a lot of power. Uh, we get major updates to the canvas, 
And my favorite thing, I think, very simple, is required input fields in forms. It's a, a, they're finally supporting the required uh, equals true attribute. We get drag and drop as a native, uh, in native support in the browser uh, with a ton of JavaScript hooks and APIs. Uh, we get offline storage, so you can, which will actually sync to a local database store and then sync up to your application through JavaScript APIs. And we remove a lot of unnecessary fluff from the specification of HTML4, such as bold and unaligned tags. Also, anything that's, that is, stands out as a formatting attribute, like border self-heading and self-spacing, those are gone. Uh, those are now better controlled in, by CSS. Uh, in lieu of, speaking of CSS here, um, borders, we, we get a lot of hooks. Borders now have color image and radius. We've had color for a while. And, uh, but now we get rounded corners and, and fun stuff that we can do there so we can eliminate the need for graphics, speed up our page loads. Box shadow and text shadow give us nice drop shadows, which you can actually combine to be multiple elements so you get the, a nice uh, embossed uh, effect on your, on your stuff. And your box models and the box sizing is probably the best thing here because if you have a 100 pixel div with a 10 pixel padding, you have a 120 pixel div. We can now force the browser to shrink that and, main, and conform to our fixed width uh, with the box sizing and uh, border box uh, attributes of, box of the box model property. The border radius, simply specify uh, the uh, Moz uh, Mozilla or WebKit border radius uh, or standard border radius for IE and you get these nice graceful rounded corners which your border, if you actually have a border uh, width set, will follow those corners as will all background elements. The only thing is uh, the, like if you, have a, if you have a div and an H1 inside, uh, the H1 will blow out. Hopefully they'll fix that up. Uh, that's, that's, it, right? Is that my time? All right, that's pretty much all I've got. There's a lot more that goes through here, including some fun stuff for, uh, for the CSS selectors. You can find pretty much everything I have here on the blog at masterwebdesign.net. Uh, so that's linked off to, to describe. So if you really want to know more about CSS3, that's a good place to go. Thank you.